Paul and express concern over some of the, the, the comments that were being made in the hallway in the back room and the cheering that was going on and the yelling and the clapping. And I was asked to, to uh, ask people not to partake in that. Uh, and I, I think we can try that tonight to see how that goes. Uh, we all know that everybody gets excited over some issues and quite frankly, that's the way I like it. We should get excited over issues. But it may just be a, a sign of di disrespect or a, 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 a different sign to someone who's trying to speak and doesn't get clapped and someone who is speaking and gets clapped and it's not, rather, not really a, a good thing. I would ask that you please cooperate with me and no clapping, no yelling, again, no heckling. Uh, we have an issue before us tonight that, uh, that's a good issue that, that we will require some good debate and uh, I'd like to have the council be able to debate that without any interference. So we thank you for being here tonight. We appreciate your presence. We appreciate the people who are watching us tonight. And we're going to have a good meeting. Madam City Clerk, would you read your quotation? Thank you, Mayor. You have not lived today until you have done something for someone who can never repay you. Thank you. Call the sixth regular meeting of the Common Council of Order. Madam City Clerk, would you please call the roll? Boren? Here. Berg? Here. Serta? Here. Davis? Here. Graf? Here. Hannah? Here. Kittleson? Here. Clayunas? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Ryan? Here. Susha? Excuse? Vanderweel? Here. And Verhasselt? Here. Fifteen present. Quorum is present. Alderman Davis, would you please lead us in reciting the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Davis. The next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes. President Berg. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I'd ask for approval of the minutes as entered on the record. Second. Motion and second to approve the, the minutes under discussion. There being none, all those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Minutes stand to approve. Resignation. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. A uh, letter or email to the mayor from uh, Danver Hasselt advising that uh, with regret he's uh, resigning from the Park and Forestry Board. I'd ask a uh, motion to accept and file. Motion to accept and file. Second. Any discussion on that? All those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And a letter to the mayor from uh, Trig Jacobson uh, advising that he's submitting his resignation from the uh, Marina and Harbor Committee uh, in that he was the SDC member appointee and he's recently resigned from the Sheboygan Development Corporation. Thank you. All all and motion to accept and file under discussion. Alderman Montemayor, do you want? Thank you, Your Honor. When I opened my packet and these letters of resignation were included, I thought that's a good idea. I know we hear about them from the front, but I do like to see these letters of resignation and then the letters that of the people you're going to confirm. And Trig Jacobson's letter was on top. And I love his last paragraph. Dear Mr. Mayor, you're a man of great integrity, and I admire your ability to stand up for what you believe in right in the face of adversity. You are a bright man with a good heart, and I wish the best for you as you lead our great city. Thank you, Trig Jacobson. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Anybody else? All those in favor of the motion to accept and file say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And for appointments, uh, hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Thomas Leonard to be considered for appointment to the Joint Municipal Court Advisory Committee as a representative for the Village of Kohler, whose term expires on 43008. And David Gass also to be considered for appointment to the Joint Municipal Court Advisory Committee as a representative for the City of Sheboygan, whose term expires also on 43008, signed by the Mayor. And those uh, will lie over. There's a document in place today to add two more uh, people. 
and Crystal Siebert to be considered for appointment to the Blue Harbor Resort Convention Center Committee to fill the unexpired term of Claudia Reinbold, whose term expires 4308, and Vicki Hall to be considered for appointment to the Board of Parks and Forestry to fill the unexpired term of Dan Verhasselt, whose term expires 43007, signed by the mayor. And that will lay over. And Thomas Liebel to be considered for appointment to the Marine and Harbor Committee to fill the unexpired term of Trig Jacobson, whose term expires 43007, signed by the mayor. And that will lie over. And then there's a document with respect to the Metropolitan Law Enforcement Services Study Committee. President Berg. Uh, yes, thank you. I move to file the document. A motion and a second to file a document. Any discussion? Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I know that we're not doing this Metropolitan Law Enforcement Study. However, this was such a good committee mixture. Can we use some of them, all of them, as part of the the studying with the county, or is that already set? We're, we're going to be looking at, uh, President Berg and I are going to be looking at maybe putting together a committee with the same combination of people. Uh, you're absolutely right. I think there's, that's a great combination of people. Thank you. Thank you. Alderman Hanna. Mayor Perez, um, I wanted to echo also that that's a great committee that you put together there, and I'd like to see that as part of the Shared Services Committee. That's the right direction to go. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Anything else? Okay, so we have a motion to, oh, to, to file. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Attorney McLean. Uh, public forum. Madam City Clerk. Uh, yes, first on the list is um, Chris Velasi. Chris, can I get your home address, please? 1125 Kentucky Avenue. Kentucky. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. Second time I spoke to you folks the last couple weeks. Pretty important stuff. Well, where do we start? We start at Sheridan Park. We start at 23rd Street. We go to Vandervart, go to City Hall. Well, I think about it every day, and we talk to people every day. Obviously, you 15 people here, you have a big choice to make today. I said it last week, Mrs. Clayhoon had said that we need to look at all the information that we get before we make decisions. The fiscal responsibility of you folks for us, 50, 60 years down the road for our kids, lies today. This is where we have to make our decisions. Uh, it's really not in best interest of the city to spend a lot of money now for later. Uh, we've wasted a lot of money for this purpose. Alderman Serta and Ryan are going to propose a resolution tonight that I've already talked to a, a, an alderman about it, and their mind is made up. That's wrong. I'm sorry. That's outright wrong. You don't make up your mind before you hear the facts. That, that to me, doesn't sit well. The other thing that, that comes to mind is before we do anything, we have to rescind this one in any way, shape, or form. Before you bring 23rd Street back in the fold, just like you did with Sheridan Park, you had to rescind that one to come to here, to go to there, to go to here. People aren't real happy with the fact that, you know, you think about it and you just were flip-flopping. People all over are hearing about this. You're flip-flopping from one to the other. Let's make up our mind, okay? Don't play games with this, with that. We have to understand that 23rd Street really isn't fiscal responsibility. Uh, what better person to understand about cleanup than Alderman Ryan? He's in that kind of business because he's had you know, his business, of course. When I was in business, it took a long time for my property to be cleaned up through, this, through the Superfund. And as if I'm not mistaken, the bank would not give me the money for that property until they got the okay from the environmental study that it was safe to be sold. So if we have any problems over there, we're stuck for a long time. The other thing is that comes to mind is why is this, the, the county not giving us a guarantee that it's 
that it's not their responsibility. It's sold as is, that's not right. Give them an option, say listen, I want you to give us a guarantee that if this comes up, you pay for it, not us. That's very important. Uh, I remember the statement that you guys had a couple weeks ago, act as if the whole world is watching. Well, it's watching. It's watching carefully, and a lot of people are being watched. And you have to be careful, because with that, with people watching you, you know, there's a lot of talk. And we have to understand that we have to come back with the fiscal responsibility like everybody talks about. Do not spend the money foolishly. It's not right for us. It's not right for our kids. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Next on the list is Greg Wegeman. Greg, can you give me your home address, please? 3421 North 51st Street. North, I'm sorry? North 51st. North 51st? Yeah. You may want to put the mic a little closer. Okay. And you will have five minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, City Council members, uh, thank you for allowing me the time to address you. I am here speaking on behalf of the Sheboygan, Greater Sheboygan Committee, which is a volunteer association of private citizens who are involved in creating, running, and advising in the business community. Uh, one of our main goals is to work to enhance the efficiencies in government. It's our strong opinion that in this matter coming before you this evening concerning the future police station location is that the 23, 23rd Street location is without equal. Uh, in 2005, two studies, one was conducted by Zimmerman Design Group, the other funded at considerable expense by local businessmen and conducted by Engman and Moyer, um, said essentially that. Um, that the 23rd Street uh, location was without question the, the best. Um, if I may read you an excerpt from the Engman Moyer study. With increasing demands for services to the public in the absence of corresponding increases in tax revenues to support them, renewed attention is being focused upon efficiencies and economies which come with cooperate, cooperative efforts between units of government. And it goes on to talk about how the state and, and Office of the Governor and a number of organizations have encouraged that type of um, cost sharing. And it goes on to talk about some of the cost sharing that the city and the county have already implemented, but the need for more. Um, we agree. Um, we'd like, in, in this case, and you look at these studies, uh, the 23rd Street site was clearly the number one choice of the experts. Um, this site allows the city to maximize current and future efforts towards sharing of services and cooperative ventures with the county. No other site selection studied offered as much in that regard. Um, we understand that the Vandervaart site may be offered again for consideration, but that matter was studied and both consultants ranked that property the poorest of the options. Um, that its consideration again will just muddy the waters. Um, we, you have before you a monumental opportunity before you, you to develop and strengthen the relationship between the city and, and county government. Do not let it slip away. Um, we feel that this council, rather than being criticized for wavering, should be commended for being willing to write a poor past decision. Um, it's time to listen to the experts and move on so this project is not delayed. Thank you for your consideration. Thank you, Greg. Next will be Barb Tuzinski. Barb, can I get your home address, please? And I'll spell my last name, too, T-U-S-Z-Y-N-S-K-I. Yes. Home address, 2404 Silverleaf Lane, Sheboygan, Silver Wisconsin. Silverleaf. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. I'm not here representing Citizens for Responsible Government, but there is an organization out there, similar to Mr. Wegemans, but we appear to have different views. We do not represent big business. That group represents the common people, the taxpayers in the community of Sheboygan. Citizens for Responsible Government's goal is accountability to the taxpayers through responsible government. They're kind of a watchdog group. People might have heard of them. They've been down in Milwaukee dealing with Ament, dealing with uh, Pewaukee. 
they have some concerns. I'm echoing some of those concerns this evening. I too have read the Moyer study. I too have read the Zimmerman study. Actually, there's a lot of different versions as to how people are interpreting this. The reality is there is not any one strong location. Some of the people here at City Hall, Mr. Holton and Ms. Enders, recommended City Hall as the first location. But when you ask the Zimmerman people, Mr. Sabanash, his response is, it is your responsibility to take the information I give you to decide what you need to do. It's a political decision. We are finally, I think, hallelujah, after 20, 30 years, towards the end of the road. We have had city leaders for a long time realizing there was a need for a new police station for this community. And it's for this community. It's not just for the police officers. It is for the long run. It is for making our community safer. And I'm hoping we are getting very close to the end. We have a resolution here by Alderman Serta and Ryan, and I appreciate their work here, saying open it up to one other site. I don't think anybody in this room is saying look at 42 other sites, go back to what we had several years ago. But right now, there is a resolution that's going to be coming to the Common Council to actually vote on going into a contract with the county to spend money to purchase that land. My concern is to be good stewards of this community and of its tax dollars, we need to go, go very carefully and very slowly. The best way to do this is through informed government. We have got new older people here. If you would just hold on a couple of weeks, have a chance to get information from Vandervart, because what I seem to hear, it's very preliminary, I understand, is that the Vandervart site might be a cheaper site. Um, from what I understand from a lot of police officers, they prefer that site at the central location. It's easy access. For people that come from outside our community, it'd be easier to get to that location. I have very serious reservations that the Common Council would move this quickly to buy basically a pig and a poke. We have no idea what the environmental impact is regarding that. When I talked to an alderman person today, both of them, I believe, have just had the preliminary study. We don't know what lies on that property. We were already told last week it could be potentially a million dollars more to purchase that piece of land. I don't know why there was a rush to move ahead this quickly. If you look at the Vandervart piece, contact the Vandervart people, you'll get more information. If we are going to be good stewards, and I think that the mayor and this common council will be, they're not going to rush into this contract until we know what that land contains and who is going to be responsible for the cleanup. That's going to take a while to do. While you're doing that study, look at Vandervart also and get that information. So then, in a few weeks from now, you will have all the information. We can compare apples to apples. You'll know how much money it costs. You know what the environmental impact is. You'll have some idea of what you're financing when you start to talk to the people who are loaning you the money. And you move forward from that. Another concern, as I looked at this study that I thought was very interesting, said flaw, uh, confidential across it, it wasn't confidential. But the sub Heading is review of the proposed city of Sheboygan Police Facility, its impact upon shared law enforcement services potential. The whole premise of this study was to determine the best location for shared services. Many of the shared services in this study no longer are on the table. The county has already moved forward on a number of these pieces. We don't need a large piece of land and a large building to have the municipal court. That's already taken care of. The county has already created some of the buildings that they need. But yet when I talk to older people, I am told that what we need to do is look in the future for sharing because the, the facility that the county is currently using for their safety building is not large enough. So they're going to need something in the future. And I said, well, why are we making a determination for what the county needs? A few minutes later, the conversation came up again, saying that, well, they've got all those sheds out there for working in their, uh, for their vehicles. They're going to have to close some of those down, and they're going to need another location. And again, I said, isn't the Common Council's charge to do what's best for the city of Sheboygan, what's best for the city police department, what's best for this community? Why are we suddenly focusing on what the county's needs are? We don't know what the county wants to do 5, 20, 30 years from now, but I have a very serious concern that that is what could be driving some members of this Common Council, to do something that the county wants to do, rather than what's best for our community. That's not the way we're supposed to be doing business. I understand that we all are part, part and parcel, we all pay county taxes, but this group of people should be looking out what's best for the city of Excuse Sheboygan. Me, is your five minutes, do you need an extra minute? Could I have one more minute, please? Thank you. I'd like, to take everybody's, I'd like to take time to thank everybody for this. I know it can be very contentious. I have faith in our common council, faith, faith in our mayor's leadership. He's done a good job so far looking at some very complicated issues. Mayor, I'd say it's on your shoulders as far as what we do. I've heard some people say it's going to be a cost savings. Mr. Wegeman, I greatly disagree with you. Even if both of us are wrong, at this point, neither one of us knows. 
until you investigate both of these sites fully, we're not going to know which is the better route. So I please ask this Common Council not to rush into anything quickly tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Barb. Um, next is Tom Rathel. Tom, can I get your home address, please? Uh, 1617 North 24th. North 24th? Yes. Thank you, and you will have five minutes. Okay, well, I won't need that long. Okay. <laughs> uh, first off, I'd like to start by thanking uh, Mayor Perez and the council members again uh, for letting me speak to you concerning the 23rd Street site <clears throat> as a choice for building the much needed police station. Uh, last year, you were presented with a petition with over 130 names of concerned citizens that live in that area immediately uh, that would be affected by your decision. While everyone signing that petition had varying reasons to do so, they signed with the belief that their concerns that were valid and would have a conscientious bearing on your decision. The reasons were everything from, um, from costing almost a million more than the present chosen site, but that's not the only problem. It's part of the overall problem potentially hidden costs in cleaning up and disposing of contaminated soil. But again, that's not the only problem, it's part of the problem. Added traffic and stop and go lights um, to the area, decrease in property value because of the traffic and the lights and the already heavy traffic on Superior Avenue with the addition of a municipal court which could run all times of the day and night. Again, it's not the only problem, but part of the overall problem the potential for having undesirables drawn to the neighborhood because of the police department and the municipal court. But again, that's not the only problem. It's part of the overall problem. Um, the loss to the city of the parking lot valued at today's cost of over a million dollars, not to mention loss of revenue of any dollar amount, once again, is not only the problem, but it's part of the overall problem. I think these 130 citizens deserve to have their concerns and feelings and opinions considered and honored. The council chose and voted last September of 2005 by a two-thirds majority to build that, build at this site, the present day location of the police department, which has served this community well for many years. The council made a decision, and I think they owe it to the citizens of Sheboygan to stick to that decision. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tom. And last is John Berner. John, can you give me your home address, please? 1919 Broadway. And you will have five minutes. Okay. Good evening, everyone. When this common council, well, not this common, when the common council met to take Sheridan Park off the books, they said the police station would be centrally located. To me, it was a scam from day one. They came upon City Hall. I told people never be built on City Hall, 23rd Street. Somehow, the county was promised there's somehow, there's a deal here with 23rd Street. And what I don't understand is the county had 14 acres of land at Sunny Ridge and some developers are that was interested, it said 500,000, that's all it's worth. How in the heck can you get more for four acres? And it's not even four acres. I think the citizens have been conned. I think a lot of times when I watch this common council meeting, or the council meetings, there are people in this council that know what they're gonna vote. They know ahead of time. And then there's some that don't know what's going on. I mean, they don't know that it's a prearranged vote. It's all eyes except for a couple nays. I saw it in the last common council meeting. When you're on camera there and people from China Lake show your faces when somebody makes a decision that wasn't 
arranged to be voted that way, you should see your faces and the looks you give each other. I don't think you're fooling the people at all. I still say you represent the people. It is your job to figure out which site is the best and economical, economical for this city. And if you can't, let the people decide. Put it on a referendum. People are really getting fed up to a point that it might be time for a change in this council. Thank you. Thank you, John. And that's it. Thank you. I want to thank all the five people who spoke to the council tonight. Thank you for taking the time to address us with your concerns. We have a couple of things we want to talk about with the mayor's comments part of it, and one of them is a trip to Esslingen. And we had it on the agenda last, last time we met. I wanted to delay that because of the, uh, the issue that was before us then. But I wanted to just mention a few things, and then I'd ask uh, Alderman Groff and President Burke if they want to add anything to it, or Alderman Meyer. Uh, all three were uh, members of the delegation. But uh, Oberbürgermeister, uh, Dr. Jurgen Zieger, asked that I extend his greetings to each and every one of you, and he asked that I thank you for the new and inspired uh, relationship that he felt was beginning to form uh, with our trip over there. As you know, it had been about, uh, well, a little over 13 years that a mayor had not visited Esslingen uh, as part of our sister city. And for a lot of us, we may say, well, so what? But I found out that they take it pretty serious. To them, it's, it's a really serious relationship, the uh, sister city uh, partner stop is what they call it, and they, they take it pretty serious. So it was a time to, to rekindle friendships and uh, a time of reaffirmation that we are committed to this type of relationship, primarily uh, because Sheboygan's roots and history is rich in German culture. We see traces of German architecture and uh, design when we go to when we were in Esslingen, and it was amazing to say, "Oh, that looks like our building over there in Sheboygan." And it, was, it was really a nice thing to, to see. We were treated very well. We were made to be felt to, to feel at home, uh, and it was just a wonderful time to meet with friends and talk about uh, some of the things that they do. We weren't able to get into the nitty-gritty and the, all the details of their, their government. We were able to, to visit a few things, a few uh, parts of the government there, and talk to some people who were there. Um, one interesting, interesting thing is that they don't, uh, they don't have department heads per se as we have them. They have uh, burgermeisters. And the burgermeister is a mayor. So there's a mayor of this, of this area, and a mayor of that area, and a mayor of that area. And then the oberburgermeister, which is, he, he oversees all of them, is the one that's the mayor. And that's the one that um, gets elected. I believe the other ones get appointed, uh, I thought, I think. The interesting thing also was that oberburgermeister Dr. Jurgen Seeger was only a resident of, a resident of Esslingen for about six weeks before he got elected. And I said, that never happened in Sheboygan. <laughs> but it happened there, okay? And it was the dynamics, the, inter the interrelationships of the, the political interest groups, if I may call them that, was very unique. And there was traces of each one when they first met us, and they met us with this huge band with the feather caps and the trumpets and the, all the music. And it was really a phenomenal thing to see because you see these things in books, but you never see it in person, and that was the most interesting thing and the most exciting thing, uh, at least from my, st my standpoint. But as I said, we did get to talk a little bit about everything, um, about a lot of things, I should say, and if any alderman is particularly interested, I'd be glad to sit down with you and, and, and take some time to, to talk, and if you have any questions, then we can, we can certainly discuss it further. At this time, I'd ask if any of the three aldermen, uh, President Burke, Alderman Graff, or Alderman Meyer, have anything to add. Oh, I may add before, before I forget. I must pay a compliment to President Berg. He astounded me. He surprised me with the German that he knows. I thought, wow, he was good. He was really good. People understood him, so that was good. <laughs> President Berg. Yeah, unfortunately, 
when I speak in English, few do, Mayor Perez. <laughs> uh, just as a comment to uh, when we talk about history in Wisconsin and in the city of Sheboygan, we just celebrated our sesquicentennial. Uh, parts of Esslingen date to the seventh century. And uh, for me, I think this was particularly revealing because my great-grandfather came from a village some 80 miles away from Esslingen. And as I look at how we keep our traditions and keep our culture, how uh, difficult it is even for myself to reach back in what little smattering of German I know, and how even though we are basically a Germanic culture from that part of Europe, many who came over in the 1850s, how yet today what little we see of our cultural heritage in thought and action. And I guess I only say that for because we are a diverse community and I think we really need to recognize and celebrate that diversity. Uh, and uh, if anybody out there would like to practice German and knows it well, please see me because I need to keep fresh on that. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, President Burke. Alan McGraw for Alan Meyer, anything? Uh, let's see, excuse me, hold on. So we got, I believe this should do it. Try it. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, what, uh, it was very interesting was <clears throat> all the architecture and, and as you you would have said um, or Alden Bird just been saying about um, some of them will date back to the seventh century, but a lot of their buildings do too. And it was funny because or it wasn't funny, but it was good that Esslingen was not hit by many wars. All their buildings were basically left standing. They, um, and they build on those. They don't tear them down. They, they keep them and they utilize them. Like we we went down to several um, levels to have dinner several nights uh, while our, our stay was there. I think one thing that we, we could have done or should have done possibly to stay there a little longer, the four days, just wasn't enough time to see everything that we could have seen. Um, we, um, we were there four days and they were full of everything that we had to do. One day we spent at the, um, the police station and uh, just the different things that they had and it was great because People there, a lot of them did speak English, so it was easy to understand it. And they shared with us how they do things. And that's one of the reasons we have this sister city program, so we can share with, with other cities that we have a, a sister city relationship. In Esslingen, they call it twinning, the twinning cities that they have. And I believe they have like six in addition to, um, to Sheboygan. Esslingen is a little bit bigger than, than Sheboygan. I think they're about 91,000. But still, there are many things that we have in common and we need to share. And that's why it was so great to, to be with them. Um, and uh, after 13 years of not visiting them, uh, I think you could see how happy they were. And especially when we were leaving on our last day about how we all talked about getting together next year when the 40th anniversary of, of our, our sister city relationship does come up. And I, I believe there's a lot of people that are going to look forward to, to coming to Sheboygan uh, to help celebrate the 40 years of, of sister city with everything we had. Thank you, Alderman McGraw. The, uh, the excitement was so, so great that uh, mm -hmm. at the same time we were there, uh, Esslingen has a <coughs> sister city relationship with some city in France. And the excitement was so, so great between the, uh, the, the Oberbürgermeister and, and the staff and us that France said, can we have one with you too? So they wanted a sister city with us. Uh, I don't know that we could afford one, but uh, the inquiry was made, and that, that's because there was a lot of uh, a lot of camaraderie, a lot of friendship, and it was rekindled and, and reignited. And I thought that that was really great. Holman Meyer, add something. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just want to add that it was one of the most exciting experiences I've ever had, and uh, the hospitality was just fantastic. Um, we were strangers in a in a in a homeland, is what it felt like. The people embraced us. One of the most surprising things to me was our first night when we went to the Old Town Hall, and there was our name, Sheboygan, honored on their, their square. And I thought that was just fantastic. And as we went around through Esslingen, anytime we mentioned Sheboygan, there was somebody that would come up to us and say, our sister city, uh, you know, I've been there, or you know, I know people from there. And it's just, it was just amazing. It was beautiful. I, the thing that surprised me also was the, the vineyards, because you think Germany beer. 
The vineyards were everywhere. The wine was wonderful, the champagne was wonderful, and the beer was excellent. <laughs> okay, maybe I shouldn't ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Interestingly though, they don't serve a lot of tab water, uh, so everything we drank had bubbles. Everything we drank had bubbles, beer, champagne, uh, wine, and water. Everything had bubbles, so that's the way it was. But as a final closing note, uh, we sit here in a 100-year-old building, and our country itself is about 230-something years old. We were in buildings that were 1,000 years old, 850 years old. Our first dinner was in a cellar that was 850 years old. Structurally sound, beautiful, just an amazing piece of architectural work. And that really inspired me to take a closer look and a more serious look at the things that we have here that we could easily lose and almost deny future generations of that beauty and importance and integrity. So keep that in mind. The other thing I wanted to mention, just a few thoughts. I know we have a full agenda and we're going to get into some issues in a minute, a couple of minutes. But I wanted to address uh, something that has been troubling me and I didn't want to address it because I don't want to engage in an exchange of unpleasantries, but I keep getting calls from people who watch us on TV, people who understand and observe our interactions uh, and that of the community with us. And that is that they felt that I needed to say something about the manner in which some people are saying this council is perceived and that manner that people are saying that this council is perceived is that we are dysfunctional, we can't make decisions, that we're always fighting, that we have political cliques and political groups, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not blind to all that criticism and negativism that seems to be part of the environment that is being nurtured. A lot of it are personal gain, political interest, a lot of it, who knows for what. So I'm not blind of what's going on in the community. What I am asking our community, and they're, and they're watching this now, and I'm asking the aldermen, is that have faith in what you're doing. Believe in what you're doing. If you don't make a decision that somebody agrees with, that's okay, that's okay. That's just the way it's gonna be. You were elected as one of the few or the one of the only people that ran for office in your district. And there's a lot of people counting on you to do the right thing. And that right thing may not be the same thing that I consider to be the right thing or that another alderman considers to do the right thing. But there's people out there that depend on you. There's people out there that depend on you as an individual because you represent their district. And there's people out there that depend on you collectively because every time you vote, you impact the whole community, not just your district. So it's important to, to, to be cognizant of the fact that even though that negativism out there, and it keeps swirling its way into everything, and on those personal attacks, and, those, and that ugliness that's out there, that is only directed at you because you are doing a good job, and you're not doing what some people may want you to do, and that can stir up some commotion. That's just the way the world wags. But please stay strong. And I always use the, the analogy of the family. I've used it before. If you look at a family, when mom and dad can no longer get along with each other or start disrespecting each other, the family starts to crumble. When mom and son or daughter cannot get along, the family starts to crumble. When dad, son, or daughter cannot get along, the family starts to crumble. And even though they go through bad times, and if they're going through bad times, and that's what's causing this, the family will crumble. But you know and I know that there's families out there that have gone through terrible times. I know my family has. But if that family stays together as a unit, just stays together as a unit and respects each other, bad times are going to come and go. And pretty soon everything's going to be OK again. But you need to have faith in the ability and, 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 and the, uh, the, the heart that you have. And I know each one of you have it. But there's going to be people that tell you you don't. And I've never seen, I have never, ever seen such ugliness and disrespect for city leaders and leaders of our nation and our state. It's unprecedented what's going on. I was, at, I was in Milwaukee, and I happened to overhear a man 
crit not criticizing, but saying some ugly statements about some people that were there. And there was a lady standing next to him. And she just nipped it at the bud. She said, you know, I don't appreciate what you're saying. I wish you wouldn't say it. And the man said, free country, I can say what I want. She said, it is a free country, but say it somewhere else, not in my presence. And that's almost what we have to do. When people come to you to, 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 per, uh, to create this respect for another alderman, or the mayor, or the city attorney, or the city clerk, any elected official, nip it at the bud. I'm not interested. Thank you. If we start taking care of ourselves the way a family takes care of each other, we're going to get strong, 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 and everything that comes before us will come and go. And people are going to start seeing what leaders you have the, the ability to be. Now you may say, Mayor Perez, yeah, right, but. Well, it's not an easy thing. There's a lot, of, a lot of personality involved, a lot of dynamic interaction, outside factors coming in. But if you stay strong, keep the family unit as an analogy in mind, we have to work together. People that elected us to work together they expect us to work together. And folks, the duty that we have and the interests that we represent are much, much bigger than ours. That those people out there and the kids all those people who depend on us do a good job. So you almost have to turn off all that negativism and just say, I'm not interested in free speech, go tell it to somebody else. That's what I started doing myself. If people are going to be ugly and rude and nasty to me, I'm going to turn the radio off. I don't mean that literally, but turn, turn it off. Because you will not imagine, you will not imagine the calls I get at home, the emails I get, the messages I get, the ugliness in it. And it has nothing to do whatsoever with the job we're doing. All it has to do with people want you to do what they want you to do, when they want you to do it, the manner in which they want you to do it, no questions asked. And it's okay to consider that advice. It's okay, it's okay to consider those concerns. But you make the ultimate decision. And finally, you make the ultimate decision collectively. I am going to say it. I'm proud of each and every one of you because everyone has shown a lot of heart, a lot of passion, and you've shown, the, you've shown you have the ingredients to lead this city forward into a brighter future. I can't do it alone. I need 16 people to stand right next to me. We can compound our influence and impact on this community 16-fold if we stick together as a, as a unit. I know we can do it. I know we can do it. I have faith and I believe in that. We will move on. Uh, notice, uh, notice of a public hearing for the vacation and discontinuance of a portion of South Water Street between the East Right-of-Way line of South 9th Street and the West line of South 8th Street of the original plat. Is there anyone here that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone? President Burke. Ah, uh, yes, Your Honor. I move that the hearing be closed. Motion a second to close hearing. Under discussion? All those in favor state aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Consent agenda, President Berg. Yes, thank you. I move to accept and fill all our roles, accept and adopt all our C's, and put all resolutions upon their passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Berg. Aye. Serta. Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Aye. Clayunas, Aye. Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. and Boren. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 624 through 629 to be referred. Report of Officers 2, 630 lies over. 631 through 647 to be referred. Resolutions introduced 3, 648 by Alderman Groff, amending the composition of the Mayor's International Committee to increase the membership from 13 to 15. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would move that that resolution be put on Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Please call the roll. 
Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Pionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Berg? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 649 by Alvin Graf. Consenting to the collateral assignment of Sheboygan Senior, Senior Community's interest in the development agreement with the City of Sheboygan. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask for suspension on this document. Is there any objection to suspension? There isn't. Please proceed. And Your Honor, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Put 649 upon its passage under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Davis? Aye. Graff. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. Berg, Aye. and Serta. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. 650 by Alderman Vanderweel, amending resolution number 270607, authorizing the appropriate city officials to enter into an agreement with the Sheboygan Area School District relative to providing the public school system with school <coughs> liaison officers from the Sheboygan Police Department so as to make the city's obligation contingent upon annual appropriation of funding sufficient to meet this obligation. Alderman Vanderweel. Uh, which one are you? I think I'm trying to... Why well, I got you, I think. What happened here? Okay, I think you're on. Thank you, Your Honor. Are you on? No, I'm so glad. Oh boy, what do we got here? They move my, my things here. Try, try now? No, that. Now I got it. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. I'll make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. Okay. Is there, is there any objection to suspend the rules? Otherwise, we don't. Well, let's take a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Please proceed. Thank you, and I'll make a motion to uh, put the resolution upon this passage. Second. Motion and second to put 650 upon its passage. Under discussion. Under discussion, Your Honor. Uh, this is a result of the questions that were asked last meeting about the, uh, about the resolution, and if there's any questions, uh, Attorney McLean would be able to answer them. Okay. Thank you. Alderman Racky. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I just want to say I'm very happy to see the five-year agreement in place here. Last year, it asked to do a three-year agreement in committee. That never came about, but now we have a five-year agreement. I'm much happier instead of messing around and fooling around with this. We've got the safety of the schools assured for the next five years. Thank you. Very good, Alderman Radke. Anything else? Okay. Please call the roll. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clayunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. Berg, Aye. Serta, Aye. and Davis. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 651 by Alderman Hanna and Ryan, increasing the members of the Joint Municipal Court Advisory Committee from three to five members. Alderman Hanna. Mr. Mayor, I move for suspension of the rules. Do we need suspension? No. We don't need suspension. Just then, I, then I would move. <clears throat> that the resolution be put upon its passage. There's a motion and a second to put that resolution upon its passage under discussion. I may just, just <clears throat> say that the reason that the Municipal uh, Court Advisory Committee has been increased to five members is because, as you recall, there was a three-member committee and Finance Director Richard Gebhardt was a member of that. So we were unable to talk uh, as mayor and finance director because that constituted a quorum in violation of open meetings law. Or other than that, we had to post a meeting every time we talked. So we haven't been talking to each other, so to speak, <laughs> for a while. Uh, and I'll be glad to have this thing go so we can start talking to each other again. And uh, we did uh, uh, consult with uh, City Attorney Steve McLean, and that's what uh, was best to do in this case, so we're going to be uh, appointing one. Anything else? Okay, please call the roll. Hannah, Kittleson, <clears throat> excuse me, Clayunas, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Aye. Radke, Aye. Ryan, Aye. <clears throat> Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. Boren, Aye. Berg, Serta, Davis, Aye. and Graf. 
15 ayes. Motion carries. 652 by Alderman Groff, Meyer, Montemayor, and Kittleson requesting that the Common Council reconsider the North 23rd Street site for the new police station. Alderman Groff. Thank you, Your Honor. I would ask for a suspension of the rules. Is there objection? Is there objection? Objection? Okay, there was a motion and a second. Let's call the roll. Let's call the roll and the suspension. Any any discussion on suspended? Alderman Groff made a motion. Alderman Myers second. We have to call the roll. This is an I vote would be to suspend. Kittleson? No. Clayunas? No. Manny? Yes. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? No. Ryan? No. Vanderweel? No. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? No. Davis? No. Graf? Aye. And Hannah? No. Um, seven ayes, eight noes. Motion fails. 653 to 656 lies over. 657 through 661 to be referred. Report of Committee 662 by Public Works informing the Department of Natural Resources that the Compliance Maintenance Annual Report has been reviewed and recommending passing the attached resolution as required by the Department of Natural Resources. Uh, Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I would like to ask for suspension of the rules. We don't need to do that. Don't need no. Okay, sorry. Um, I would make a motion that the RC be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. There's a motion and a second under discussion. Um, could we open the floor, have Dale Doerr please speak on this issue? Uh, Mr. Doerr is a department head, he can address us. Mr. Doerr, would you please step up, sir? Thank you, Mayor. This, the uh, CMAR is a uh, method by which the DNR, Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, uh, monitors wastewater treatment plants and how well they do uh, do their job. And uh, the, the, this year again, uh, they've changed the grading system. They made it so it's more like school. We got a 4.0 uh, grade A, the, the best you can get uh, for the second consecutive, actually probably the third consecutive year. Uh, it's, it's, they use it as a, as a benchmarking tool, so when other communities don't do quite as well as we do, they look at how we do our work. This has to do with cleaning sanitary sewers and, and operating the treatment plant, and, and then they, and they, I guess, force them to, to, to do that type of work the same way that the good, good plants do. But uh, we just have uh, a, a, another good report with the good employees, uh, that work for the city. Thank you. Excuse me. Any questions for Mr. Doe? Okay. Thank you very much. Sir. Okay. So we have motion to accept and adopt uh, 662 and put the resolution upon its passage. All those in favor say aye. aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 660, report of committee 6, 663 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 3435 based on the failure to cooperate with the committee and failure to reveal all violations. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I make a motion we accept the report of committee. Second. A motion second, under discussion. Under discussion is Sherry Blackshear here this evening. Sherry Blackshear, she's not here this evening. Okay, Your Honor. thank you, Alderman Ratke. Any other discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Clayunas. Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 7, 664 by law and licensing, stating that the quasi judicial hearing to determine whether Class B or cla and Class B alcohol beverage license and cigarette license number 2231 held by Gorner LLC should be suspended or, revo or revoked was held and that the Law and Licensing Committee recommends various penalties. 
Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second to uh, accept and adopt. Is there a discussion? There, there be, is a party here. Um, I ask that uh, Meninder Carr, is Meninder Carr here this evening? No, she's not, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Okay. Any discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Clyunas? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 665 by law and licensing stating that a quasi-judicial hearing to determine whether beverage operators license number 6288 held by Manander Carr was held and that the law and licensing committee recommends a suspension for a period of 10 days to begin within 30 days. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the report of the committee be accepted. Second. Motion and second under discussion. Uh, is Manander Carr here this evening? She's not here this evening, Your Honor. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Anything else? There being none, please call the roll. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Ratke. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clionis. Aye. And Manny. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 666 by law and licensing recommending that the that alcohol license application number 2231 Sheboygan Mart be granted pursuant to various conditions. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I accept the report of committee. Make a motion that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second to accept and adopt 666 under discussion. Just for discussion purposes, Your Honor, this is basically the uh, the uh, vote that you law and licensing took in the, the terms of the punishment for the offenses that occurred at this establishment with the application. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Okay, anything else? We will call the roll, Madam City Clerk. Montemayor? Aye. Ratke? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Davis, Aye. Graf, Aye. Hannah, Aye. Kittleson, Clionis, Manny, Aye. and Meyer. I'm sorry? Aye. I'm sorry. Thank you. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 667 by law and licensing stating that a quasi judicial hearing to determine whether the contractor's license and roofing registration number 621, held by Mark S. Winkle, was held and that the Law and Licensing Committee recommends that the roof and registration be suspended for a period of nine months with other provisions. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. I ask that the, I make a motion that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Second, Second. under discussion. It's Mark Winkle here this evening. Mark Winkle's not here this evening, Your Honor, but there are two people here that were involved with this and this, uh, uh, suspension and revocation actually was retroactive to October 27th of last year, the day after the Board of Contractors Examiners met, and we asked Mr. Winkle at that time for a voluntary suspension, and it carried on for many months after that, and uh, the Board of Contractors voted five to nothing at that time to ask him for, you know, I think it was a nine month, if I recall, I, I can't think right off the top of my head, um, for a nine month suspension or voluntary surrender. He did not go for that and we came finally to a uh, hearing last week which just basically came down to a, a hearing for the uh, punishment for what happened there. And uh, we never heard the facts in the committee but really there are two people here this evening. One is the vice chairman of the board of contractors who has a better feel for what had happened as he is a contractor and I being the chairman of that committee, I'm not a contractor but he can uh, better tell you what really happened. And Ms. Suzanne House, who was actually one of the persons who was a property owner that was affected by this. So I'd make a motion that we open the floor to both Ms. House and Mr. Hopp. Okay. Motion and second. Before you vote, is the council okay with that? Last time, I always like to let the alderman de debate it, but then somebody, I think Alderman Davis made a motion to call the question. So 
Is it okay if we let the people speak before the council debates it in full? Do you want the council to debate it in full first? Do you want the council to debate it in first? If we ask the council to debate it, Alman Radke, would you, is it okay with sure. you, sir? Sure, we withdraw? can do that. Open the floor okay, later. Thank you. Thanks. So we'll just debate it. Let's see who's next blinking. And those people will address the council in a minute. Thank you. Alderman Barn, you're first. Thank you, Your Honor. <coughs> uh, Mark Wil Winkle is a uh, friend of mine, and I abstain uh, in the committee on this, and I'm also going to abstain on the vote tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Alderman Meyer, you're next. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I was on the Lawn Licensing Committee last year when this issue was first brought in to us, and we rejected this um, penalty because we felt it was not fair <coughs> to the people that were victimized here. And what has happened the other night is basically a slap on the wrist. Um, we, we give a lot of people a lot harsher punishments for doing less than what happened in this um, situation. And I can't go along with this sentence. It's just not, it's not fair. It's not fair to the people. It's not fair to the honest contractors in this city. And I just can't in all good conscience um, accept this. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Ryan. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Mark Winkle has been a contractor in Sheboygan for over 20 years. Uh, these two violations in question occurred in 2001 and 2002. Uh, he's done literally hundreds of roofs without any complaints, any formal complaints for 20 years. He had two of them within a period of, I believe, six months that these roofs were done. Um, I did have the privilege of hearing this uh, quasi-judicial uh, uh, hearing. Um, Mr. Winkle, since 2001, 2002, was continuing to be a contractor, pulling licenses, doing roofs in the city of Sheboygan until uh, October of uh, last year, October 27th, I believe it was, of 2005. Also during that time, he had no complaints. Um, it was the recommendation of, the, uh, of Chuck Adams, uh, city attorney, uh, to go with this nine-month license suspension. Uh, both myself and uh, Alderman Berg uh, recommended that if Mr. Winkle were to violate anything in the future that this inc these incidents would be considered in that penalty. Uh, we felt it was fair. Um, you know, Mr. Winkle definitely, he, he, he tried to make amends to make it right. Mm -hmm. one, of, one of the roofs, um, he, which was a, a church, uh, he basically was in over his head on it. He admitted it, didn't have the expertise to do it, didn't have the personnel to do it, paid the price for it. Uh, the other, um, he did respond to the homeowner on several occasions, trying to, to make it right, trying to make it sound, um, and, and was not able to. I, th I think Mr. Winkle is not, he's not a fly-by-night operator by any means. He's been in business for over 20 years in this town. Uh, until these incidents, I believe he, uh, he does have a, a decent reputation as a contractor. And uh, I feel that the... Uh, that the penalty uh, that he has received is fair. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, October 27th was the day he stopped, said he stopped doing roofing contracts in the city of Sheboygan. That was the day after the Board of Contractors had met, and we had asked him at that point in time. He voluntarily did that. Uh, and just to set the record straight, Chuck Adams was the prosecutor for this case um, and I did recuse myself in the committee because I was under the assumption we were going to a full quasi-judicial hearing at the time, and I was part of the original case that sent this forward. But at the time, Chuck Adams is acting as prosecutor in the case, not as our city attorney. We had outside uh, legal advice in that particular instance. <clears throat> but Mr. Winkle voluntarily stopped doing jobs at that point in time. And there had been back and forth, you know, trying to get this thing settled out but nothing until last week, and now we have a piece of paper that says, well, October 27th of last year is good enough, and I can't accept that. Thank you, Alderman Radke. Alderman Pre President Berg. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I am, uh, 
In terms of the process that went on, really it involved the committee listening to uh, testimony uh, that was presented by both sides. Uh, the particular testimony that I found most striking was from Mr. Mulder of the church. And I believe the church had likely suffered the most significant uh, injury regarding uh, dollars and cents. Uh, Mr. Mulder said that he didn't have any specific concerns about having Mr. Winkle return to work as a roofing contractor. His request would be that there would be a level of oversight by the building inspection department. And my guess is, knowing the building inspectors, that they will certainly, if, uh, if the council chooses to uphold this recommendation, I think they will certainly provide and be very proactive in assuring that Mr. Winkle continues to uh, serve the community in a manner that doesn't bring about such complaint. Another factor, I believe, is that the maximum rec uh, revocation for any individual would be a period of one year. Uh, as Alderman Ryan stated, as this was the first offense in a period of uh, some 20 years, uh, the feeling was that if we could consider this as a precedent uh, to be considered in any subsequent uh, offense, that that would, uh, if you would, be a suitable remedy for the matter. Thank you, President Berg. We have Alderman Meyer, second time. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I guess I, I'm not understanding this. I think when you're supposed to be punished for something that you did wrong, that means punishment. And one of the things that Mr. Winkle did was not take out a permit for a roof he did in the city. Now, in the last seven months, he has not taken out any permits in the city, but he did admit that he is still working around the county. I don't think this is any punishment. He has continued to work, and we're not going to do anything about you know, what he did wrong to begin with. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Next, we have Alderman Vanderwiel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I just have a question. I think Alderman Rackey can answer it. If we deny this recommendation tonight, uh, what will happen? Will we have another quasi-judicial hearing, or will, the, will it go back to the committee? My question is, what would happen if we deny this recommendation? I would ask Attorney McLean first. Attorney McLean. Uh, I guess I, I would hesitate to uh, go into this too much. Uh, I, again, represent the city attorney's office, which prosecuted the case. Uh, we did have outside counsel. I, we checked uh, whether Mr. Volkner was available tonight. He's on vacation. So he's out of town, so he was not available to uh, advise the council. Uh, but I, I guess to answer your question, if you did not accept this recommendation, I think we'd be back to square one as far as uh, uh, going back to law and licensing and uh, having another hearing to come up with uh, some other recommendation unless Unless the council were to uh, adopt some other recommendation on their own, uh, if if this was uh, not abided by. Thank you, Attorney McLean. We have next. We have Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, being a member of the Lawn Licensing Committee, I continue to share my concern uh, for Miss House and the church as well. Uh, as Alderman Ryan pointed out, he has approximately 20 years' experience in the city and the area which makes it even more perplexing why so many seemingly simple violations were made on this project. Uh, he has, I've been told, one crew to oversee, which again tells me he uh, had ample opportunity to pick up on these problems. I don't feel, after listening to the information, that he made a good faith effort to remedy the problem to Miss House. I really don't, so therefore I, I can't support the recommendation. Thank you, Alderman Rehassel. Alderman Ryan, second time, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this has been going on since 2001, 2002. Uh, I believe this is the third time that it's come before the council, correct, Alderman Reckie? Or before the, before law and licensing? Yes, the third time. Uh, to drag this out any further, to start again from scratch, if the maximum penalty is 12 months, we're talking about a three month penalty here uh, it would be my recommendation that uh, this matter be put to bed. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Any President Burke? Yes, uh, thank you. I think one final note. It's my understanding that uh, uh, there is an appellate process that should uh, uh, the plaintiff should uh, Mr. Winkle 
not agree with the decision of this council, the remedy available to him is to immediately uh, take it to uh, circuit court. Is that correct? So we are not the final arbiter in this case. The due process allows uh, uh, Mr. Winkle to also take it to circuit court. Thank you, President Burke. Anything else? Okay. Alderman Ratke, second time. I'd like to open the floor to Andy Hopp and Susan House, if I, if I could please, uh, Your Honor. And then I would uh, make a motion after, I'd like to come back and make a motion after that, because that's allowable to hear from Mr. Hopp, who's the Vice Chairman of the Board of Contractors Examiners, and who was there and saw the evidence in, in front of us. Okay, there's a motion to open the floor to two people. Is there a time limitation, Alderman Ratke? Was that? Is there a time limitation? Five minutes each. Five minutes each. Motion, and then it was a second. Second. Any discussion on that? Alderman Manny. Thank you, Your Honor. I think it's important to hear from especially um, uh, both people, I guess, because there's differential between the uh, contractors board and what they would like to do by way of punishment versus what Chuck Adams had recommended. So I think that's the key to the struggle in this issue. Thank you, Alderman Manny. Any? Uh, Attorney McLean? Uh, not quite, Alderman uh -huh. Manny. Uh, Attorney Adams is here also, and perhaps if you're opening the floor, perhaps you'd allow him to speak also uh, as far as opening the floor. Oh, just, would you like to include that in your motion, Alderman Rettke, and the second? Okay, we got three to open the floor. Motion and a second to open the floor to three people. Five minute limitation. Any discussion on that? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion aye. carries. One, one opposition. Who would like to go first? Please do, sir. Thank you, Your Honor, and thank you, members of the Common Council, for allowing me to speak. I come before you this evening to respectfully request that you revoke the roofing registration of Mr. Winkle for a period of nine months, starting from this date forward, rather than retroactive back to October 27th, as recommended by the Law and Licensing Committee. It's not easy for me to get up here and speak out against a local businessman, especially one who is a, a member of that loose fraternity that is the construction trades. I don't know Mr. Winkle personally. I've only talked to him on one occasion, and that's when he was before the Board of Contractors. He's not a competitor in business to me, so I really have no personal agenda here. I do, however, feel compelled by the fact that I'm a member of the Board of Contractor Examiners I take that very seriously, and I feel it's my duty to protect the citizens of Sheboygan from contractors that aren't following the building code. I would like to support my request for this stronger penalty by using three criteria. First, the severity of the offenses. I hope you have the stipulations in front of you, uh, RC-6-07 from Law and Licensing. If you don't, I. Uh, you can follow along. I'll quickly summarize them, paraphrase them, and explain what they mean. And these are the facts that law and licensing accepted. First, no building permit. Whether, there, whether this was intentional or merely an oversight, I'll leave for you to judge. Second, Mr. Winkle installed a roof that was not structurally sound, was not free from defects that would admit rainwater, and was not waterproof. Ms. House started with a roof that was simply leaking around the chimney. When she contacted Mr. Winkle to come out and look at it, she quickly lost faith in his ability to fix the problem. And then when she called the building inspector as she pursued the matter to small claims court, she became aware that she had a roof that not only leaked, but had numerous code violations. It was plain and obvious to me because I happened to be in the area when Mrs. House's roof was redone. So they tore off Mr. Winkle's shingles, and it was plain and obvious to me that there were several areas where there was improper substrate. What that means in common language is there were spots where the existing cedar shingles were missing, 
or were rotted and gone completely. Several areas along the side of the building had no flashing. And one of my things that I really took notice of was when the crew doing the project stated to me, there's one spot where a critter could get into the attic. That's how big a hole there was. No underlayment or felt paper, the third finding of fact. This black tar paper that we often refer to in the building trades. At the Law and Licensing Committee, there was some discussion that this was a minor offense, not using tar paper, because of the small cost of this material. I would beg to differ. Omitting the tar paper, where you get 400 square feet for under $15 a roll, seems to me like something you would automatically do if it meant that the roof was going to be code compliant. No attic ventilation. There was some discussion at Law and Licensing that because Ms. House roofs didn't have attic ven ventilation before this roof was put on, Mr. Winkle didn't need to put any on. The fact of the matter is, our building inspectors do not grandfather old buildings when you put on a new roof. You are required to put in ventilation. And a fact that did not come up at Law and Licensing was the fact that all manufacturers now will, will void their warranty <laughs> if you do not put in attic ventilation. Five, properly driven fasteners. In many ways, this was a result of the improper substrate because either in their haste, they nailed, in the, nailed or stapled in the wrong spot on the shingles, or the staples went partially through or all the way through the shingles because there was nothing underneath. We then switch to the Calvin Christian Reform Church project. Number six. It was not waterproof. The roof leaked, but you don't know to the degree that it leaked. What Mr. Mulder told me is what they would do every time it rained is they would make a list and they would post it in the closet for the custodian. So when Mr. Winkle came, he could hand them the new list every time. And every time it rained, they would make another list. On one occasion, it was dripping on the organ. Luckily, there were parishioners there and they were able to move the organ. Excuse me, Mr. Hopp, your five minutes are up. I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Hopp. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Ma'am, please. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you for taking this time to listen to me. I know that you have a lot of really important things to talk about, but I appreciate that. Um, an individual can come and talk to you. Um, I am Suzanne House. I live on Barrett Street and I bought my first house a few years ago. My inspector told me that the roof was bad, I should get it redone. I asked that that be part of the purchase and so the roof was redone um, in August 2002. It first leaked in August 2003, then in October 2003 and then June 2004. Um, I know that Mr. Winkle's attorney has said many times that Mr. Winkle responded immediately and tried very hard to make amends. There are many good faith efforts um, and that's what I would like to talk about. The code violations are well documented, there are pictures and everything, but um, Mr. Winkle's attorney um, implied that I asked him to come once when he didn't fix it immediately, I immediately took him to court. In fact. I asked Mr. Winkle to help me, I asked his insurance company to help me, I asked the company that held his bond to help me, my insurance company was trying to help me, and then I went to small claims court because Mr. Winkle um, would not help. I um, kept working because I thought there was this basic idea that if someone does a bad job, then they'll reimburse you to get it done properly. And apparently that was naive, and now I'm much wiser in the ways of the world. Um, I had to pay $8,000 to have my roof redone because it was in such bad shape. And I knew that if I ever go to sell my house, there's no way I could say it's a good roof because it clearly had lots of problems. I also had to spend um, a few thousand more to fix the inside damage. At this point, my interest um, in the penalty that is given to Mr. Winkle has to do with just consequences for the actions a professional takes and my attempt, I don't want other people to have to deal with this. I would much rather be at home, not here talking about my roof. I've learned far too much about roofs. Um, but there was a lot of correspondence. I'm an English teacher, so what I can do, I don't roof, but I write letters. So I have um, a lot of correspondence and I'd like to read some of uh, Mr. Winkle's correspondence that happened about this. Um, well, first when he came, he stood with me and he said it was the chimney 
Um, his assistant put some mortar, some putty in the mortar, and he told me never to have a roof done as part of a house sale, that his company had complied with the seller's request for quick work. At that point, I pretty much lost faith and decided I would rather have somebody else up on my roof. So um, I eventually asked my insurance company to help me. He wrote to my representative of the American Family Insurance, an inspection by the city building inspector has absolved us of any wrongdoing. That was July 6, 2004. In fact, there was no building inspection until October 18, 2004. And then he was cited because um, the roof was not watertight. He, um, when I went after, I tried to get money from the bond um, and the National Nation Specialty Insurance says, I have spoken with Mr. Winkle who has indicated the roof was installed properly and satisfied all pertinent codes and ordinances. It had not at that point. Mr. Winkle wrote to Bradley Temple from the insurance company, it's unfortunate that Ms. House had a leak problem, but the fact that the problem surfaced a full year after our work was completed would indicate that the problem is not a result of workmanship. Ms. House's allegations about workmanship are based on speculation and supposition and she offers no evidence to support her allegation. Her allegation is further contraindicated in that the municipal inspector has not cited my firm for code violations or workmanship deficiencies. Um, it's true, that was August and they weren't cited, he wasn't cited until October. Um, when he wrote to the subrogation examiner for the insurance company that was helping me, um, your letter is a grievous error and it's a complete falsehood. Your insured, Suzanne L. House, was informed by another roofing contractor that the leak in question emanated from a defect in the chimney flashing which was installed by another contractor after our work was complete. This is something that he said in court, that there was someone else who had been on the roof. I never had anybody else on the roof. I went back and got statements from the realty company and from the previous owner who never had anybody else on the roof. Again, Ms. House's allegations are born out of speculation and supposition. When I asked, when I had, uh, I don't know what the words are, I said I would like to take him to court. His response was, the residence does not need to be re-roofed. I was not cited by the building inspector for a code violation. Then we went through the mediation and we ended up in court um, where I learned that he had another roofer get up on my roof without my knowledge or permission and do a roof inspection that I didn't see until we were in court. Um, uh, finally, on June 27th, his lawyer asked that, in fact, he not have to pay court costs because Mr. Winkle wants the court to know he has spent more than $3,000 in attorney's fee and an additional 365 in expert witness fees defending his case, so he shouldn't have to pay anything. August 28th, he wrote to the judge without copying me and requested that the matter be reconsidered. None of this, to me, speaks of a professional trying to do his best to make up for an error. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you very much. Uh, Assistant Attorney, Assistant City Attorney, Mr. Adams. Thank you, Your Honor. I speak this evening simply as the uh, prosecutor uh, on the case. And uh, uh, my recommendation was, in fact, that the license be suspended for a period of nine months and that uh, Mr. Winkle be given credit uh, for the period of time that he voluntarily uh, did not act on the license. Um, I, I, I'd note that uh, um, I, do, I, I did have some knowledge of, of what was going on. I'm a member of the church uh, where, where this occurred. In fact, I've been dripped upon, a uh, member of the council there. And uh, Ms. House is a friend of mine, my former next door neighbor on North 9th Street. Uh, but I do think that the penalty that has been imposed is, is a fair one. Uh, first of all, why nine months? Uh, nine months primarily because these are serious violations. They are not the type of violations that uh, are minor and warrant a, a short type of violation like, like we would oftentimes do for minor violations. Nine months is three-fourths of the maximum penalty. Uh, and I think that uh, these kind of violations are worth uh, nine months. Uh, the reason why I did not recommend the full one year is because this is somewhat different than previous cases where we have requested the full one year or revocation. Those are, we're in situations uh, that uh, we call cut and run contractors. The most recent one we did was a contractor by the name of Scott Kale, uh, who we revoked the license. He was a cut and run contractor, uh, had done some work, disappeared. Um, and there's perhaps only, maybe only one or two of you who were on the council at that time a few years ago, uh, but an elderly couple uh, that basically was built out of their money when a contractor um, 
left without even completing the work. This was not that type of cut and run, and so I felt that one year would not be, the maximum would not be appropriate, but nine months would be. As far as why giving credit for the period of time uh, that he did not take uh, the license, one is because the process simply took a long time, and he did voluntarily, once the uh, uh, contractor's board requested that he voluntarily surrender his license, he did take the action. He didn't surrender the license, but he didn't act on the license either. Uh, typically, we do give credit in, in criminal court and in civil court. Uh, if, if someone sits in jail for a period of time before conviction, we give them credit for jail time served. And this is something similar to that. He has uh, paid a penalty. In essence, if we were to uh, suspend him for nine months from today, in essence what we'd be doing is imposing a penalty of between 16 and 17 months, which would be longer than the maximum provided under the law, which I, I just felt would, would not be fair in this particular situation. And so giving him credit uh, for that time seemed to me uh, to be uh, an appropriate way uh, to deal things. And so that's why I made the recommendation, recommendation that I did, and I believe that's why uh, the committee accepted that um, recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Assistant City Attorney Adams. We have uh, Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I respect Assistant Attorney Chuck Adams' recommendations, but I don't agree with, with them. So I would like to make an amendment to the RC, if I could. I believe you And can. the amendment would read on the fourth page, would be the last page. It says that the roofing registration held by Mark S. Winkle be suspended for a period of nine months. And then I would add starting June 19th. Second. And then um, the words with effective immediately with credit being given for the time since October 27, 2005 should be deleted. And then go on to read the rest of the uh, RC. Thank you, Alderman Manor. We'll motion and second. Madam City Clerk, you get that? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. This is what the Board of Contractors Examiners wanted from the very beginning. To go back to October 27th, and boy, there's enough feedback in here. To go back to October 27th would not be correct because we met on October 26th in a special meeting. We only meet every other month, the fourth Wednesday, and I, we had a normal meeting in November. We were not able to take anything up until November. At that time, we rejected and sent it back. There was a little back and forth in that time. But the truth of the matter is, you know, he could have worked the whole time. If he was sitting in jail, well, then I would have given him credit for that because he couldn't have worked, but he could have worked. He took it upon himself to go backward while we were negotiating back and forth trying to come up with this. So I think nine months from today, and it's what was a recommendation of the Board of Contractors, and if you would have seen the pictures, and I wish I could have brought them in here, and I should have, um, I know we didn't think of it till just now. I'm not a contractor. Um, I rely upon the building inspection department as a chair of that committee to help me understand in certain situations. I didn't need any help to understand the situation. <coughs> I saw those pictures. Those pictures weren't pretty. They were not at all. I mean, it did not look like a, a, a newly finished roof. It was very bad looking. Now, that was a picture of Miss uh, House's home. Um, pictures of the church, I didn't really remember seeing. Um, but. When I took a look at those pictures, if I had a contractor like that, you, you would have thought my house came out of Louisiana or something after, after the hurricane. It, it did not look very good. And I'm just a regular working guy here. I'm not a contractor or anything, but I could see it just as quickly as I looked at those pictures. It was not the best of workmanship. It was very uh, shoddy workmanship from what I could tell at best. So this is what the board wanted to do from the word go. And I support all the person um, Van Der Wee's amendment, because if he had none, I would have, so thank you. And uh, so that's all I have to say, thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. We have Alderman Ryan next. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, as uh, Assistant City Attorney uh, Chuck Adams uh, stated, this would be the equivalent of almost doubling the penalty for Mr. Winkle. He has not done a roof in the city since October 27th. Um, I believe that, that his recommendation is correct to all of a sudden now tack on another nine months on top of the, the eight months that he has nearly already uh, completed voluntarily not doing roofs, I think is excessive at best. Uh, 
I, I, I don't see Mr. Winkle accepting that penalty. Uh, I, I, I guarantee you I wouldn't to be uh, penalized doubly. Uh, and I think this is going to continue on and on into the future if it is not accepted uh, uh, as uh, stated in the resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Next we have Alderman Serta. Thank you, Your Honor. If there's Vice one, President Serta, I'm sorry. That's okay. Excuse me. If there's one thing I think we're in agreement on is that is he should have nothing less than the nine months. Can someone tell me what I'm missing is why is the seven month voluntary restrictions that he imposed on himself any different than the seven months that we're looking to in the future? He served his time, what am I missing? Because if not, then again, we would, that would be dual. We would be double penalizing him. Why are we looking at that seven month voluntary any differently? Can someone answer that question? Alderman Red, wait a minute. We have Alderman Montemayor next. Unless you, were you gonna to respond to that question? Alderman Radke, please respond. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, Normally when somebody surrenders a license, they come into City Hall and turn that license into somebody when they voluntarily surrender a license. In this case, I don't believe that ever happened in any situation. Um, he could have continued to work out there because he did hold his license, but he never turned it in. He had it the whole time. So I don't think that's a voluntary surrender when you hold on to your license and can continue to work if you choose to. He just chose not to while this was all going on, trying to come up with the penalty uh, phase. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, it seems to me that the penalty should be that you won't be earning money for nine months. If he was still earning lots of money working in the county, how was he complying with not earning money for nine months? That's my question. Thank you, Alderman Montemayor. Alderman Sardo, second time. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, just to reiterate, I understand Alderperson Racky's opinion on that matter, but when you take into consideration the legal advice by S the Assistant City Attorney Chuck Adams, who was the prosecutor, he even recognizes that in court, that seventh month voluntary um, suspension that he gave himself would still probably be upheld. Thank you, Mr. Alderman Ryan, second time, sir. No, thank you, Your Honor. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, uh, uh, he has voluntarily surrendered. He has not surrendered his license. He's voluntarily not done roughs for seven plus months, and the penalty uh, suggested here will carry it out to nine months. Um, to, to say that he hasn't earned money in the last seven months, uh, if, his, if his license was suspended for nine months starting today, Mr. Winkle would still be able to go to the county and work and do the roughs in the county. He just wouldn't be able to do roughs in the city is my understanding. Uh, this is his city roughers license, not the county roughers license. Um, so it's, you know, it's, I, I, I don't think you can ask somebody if they're not sitting in a jail cell getting four squares a day or three squares a day to starve themselves for nine months and not work at all. Uh, for him to have worked in the county, he voluntarily stayed out of the city. He did not pull any permits in the city for the last seven plus months. Uh, I believe it is it is it, sensible to go uh, uh, with uh, uh, Assistant City Attorney Chuck Adams' recommendation in this case. Uh, I personally uh, do not care to to see it again in the in the uh, law and licensing committee. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. I, I don't wish to address the merits. I guess it's really a procedural issue. Um, and Alderman Radke and uh, Alderman Vanderweel, I guess you made the motion. But the, the technically, you've got the committee report from law and licensing. I, I don't think you really <coughs> want to amend the committee report. That's the recommendation of the committee. I guess what you would propose to do would be to accept and file the report of the committee and recommend, as you said, that the suspension for nine months uh, be from today as, as opposed to being retroactive and, and that the other provisions in here that the, those complaints or those allegations be used for future penalties and so forth still be in there. But that's just sort of a technical issue that uh, you're not really I don't think it's appropriate for the council to amend a committee report, if you know what I understand what I'm saying. Alderman Vanderweel. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Attorney McLean, for uh, clearing that up. 
Then I will make a motion to accept and file the, uh, the RC and with recommendation to start the nine months, June 19th. Second. So what was the motion again? The motion was to accept and file the, the uh, RC, the report of committee, and to recommend that we start the nine month um, suspension period today, June 19th. Recommend to the Law and Licensing Committee? No? no. Just, just recommend. Okay. To the Was there a second to that? Okay. There's a motion and a second. Under discussion. Please call the roll. Does everybody understand what you're going to vote on? Attorney McLean, did you want to say something, sir? Uh, just to clarify, that would also include, as I understand it, Alderman Vanderweel, that the similar language that's in the recommendation as far as uh, that should additional formal complaints be brought before the Contractors Examiner's Board that, uh, or the Law and License Committee or the Council that the allegations of complaint should be taken into account by those recommending penalties and the potential future actions. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. We're, Alman Ryan, you're this third time, are you? Well, excuse me, does the Council have objection to that? There is a rule two times per. It's a new motion. It's a new motion? Oh, That's up? right, I forgot. Alderman Ryan. Uh, thank you once again, Your Honor. <laughs> um, why do we have uh, Assistant City Attorney Chuck Adams as our prosecutor that recommended this penalty uh, if we are going to, in essence, uh, take his recommendation, take the recommendation of the uh, uh, participants in the quasi-judicial hearing, throw it out the window and impose a stiffer penalty uh, that has the potential um, to be considered almost a, a, a double penalty. Uh, I think we're kind of uh, probably sticking our, possibly sticking our feet in some hot water here. I don't know the, the legalities of it myself because I am not an attorney. However, I do trust in the judgment of uh, Assistant City Attorney Chuck Adams, and I do highly uh, uh, suggest that we go along with his recommendation. Thank you, Alderman Ryan. Alderman Ratke. Thank you, Your Honor. Once again, let me give you the, the, the sequence of events here. Um, this came before the Board of Contractors Examiners, who voted five to nothing unanimously for a nine-month suspension or voluntary surrender. Mr. Winkle didn't do that. He eventually came here, went to law and licensing. The quasi-judicial hearing which was held was a penalty phase. It wasn't the full quasi-judicial hearing. The facts of the case really didn't come out here in, in committee like they did back in the Board of Contractors. Now my board voted five to nothing and I'm backing my board all the way on this one. There is no double penalty here. There's been no penalty imposed at this point in time. Mr. Winkle voluntarily stopped taking jobs within the city of Sheboygan since October 27th of last year. He voluntarily did that. He didn't come and say to us, here's my license, I'm not working in Sheboygan. He just decided to try and, and, and come around the system that way. I don't buy it. The fact of the matter is, I saw the evidence in committee, we sent it up the ladder, and it, it still stands in my mind. I can vividly see those pictures of the workmanship there, or the lack thereof. And I was not a happy man when I saw them. I sit with a bunch of contractors, and we were all there that night. And they all showed me, and they all told me, because I asked a lot of questions of these people, because they're in this business. It's not a double penalty. The penalty has not been levied at this point in time. Mr. Winkle, in his own mind, has paid his price. That's what he decided to do. It's not what we've, uh, what we've put forward. Secondly, this is the final court right here. This is the final stop. If somebody doesn't like a penalty phase, we took a liquor or a beer license from a lady tonight for 90 days. She could have come up here and argued in front of us as well. The Law and Licensing Committee only makes a recommendation to the Common Council. Not that that recommendation has to be taken. It's only a recommendation by the committee. The Common Council still has the final say over anything that happens in this city, whether it be a license or putting a new manhole cover in the middle of 8th Street. The Common Council has the final say. And that's where the court is tonight, right here. After that, he'd have to go to circuit court, but we are the final court in the city of Sheboygan. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Ratke. Uh, this board is lighting up like a Christmas tree, so bear with me. <laughs> Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I just want to say this is the same penalty 
that was offered the last time, last year when I was on law and licensing, and we said no at that time. And it's the same penalty with less time because more months have gone by and nine months retroactive, well now we're down to what, a month and a half? This is just wrong. Thank you. Alderman Van Der Weel. Thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to explain myself a little bit. I was on law and licensing for three years and I worked with Assistant Attorney Chuck Adams quite a bit and I respect him, but his recommendations are just recommendations. It is our job as aldermen who, who are making this decision to look at the situation and if we feel that the penalty should be stronger or weaker, we should suggest it. And that's what I did. I feel that the penalty should be stronger and you each have a single vote and I made my suggestion. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Van Der Alderman Perhessel. There's been, a, thank you, Your Honor. There's been a lot of talk here in the last few minutes about double penalty and so on. And if, in fact, Mr. Winkle did self-impose a, uh, I guess, a penalty on himself since October 27th, that would be a great gesture by him. However, I guess I think we should entertain the possibility perhaps he wasn't approached for jobs within the city limits since that period too, seeing he did have his license and he was able. Um, there is a possibility he wasn't approached. And, that may be the scenario. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hassel. Oh, President Berg. Uh, yes, thank you, Your Honor. I think a couple of, of just thoughts on the, the motion. I think the, um, one of the biggest penalties uh, confronting this contractor is the judgment of his peers. And also the discussion of his workmanship in the full light of the council and in front of the community. I don't think there's any penalty that can match that for any individual who holds himself out for business. So if we're talking about nine months now or nine months later, I think the public certainly has been very well informed about uh, the nature of the offenses. And uh, I think for me, the length of penalty to some degree is moot in light of the impact that this likely has upon this individual as he holds himself out to the public as a contractor. Thank you, President Burge. We have, are you calling the question? Is there a second to that? Second, sir. Undebatable. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? We will call the question. Sorry, Alderman Manning. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. <clears throat> um, this is to accept and file the RC with the recommendations that the penalty start June 19th and take out the part in here with credit being given for the time since October 27th, 2005. Is that correct, Alderman Vanderbilt? Yes. And I vote would be to do that. Um, Radke. Aye. Ryan. No. Vanderbilt. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Abstain. Berg. No. Serta. No. Davis. No. Groff. Hannah? Aye. I'm sorry? Aye. Thank you. Kittleson? No. Clayunis? Aye. Manny? No. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Eight ayes, seven noes. Motion carries. Sue, I think it was six noes and one abstention. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, take that back. There was an abstention. Six no's, one abstention. Five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, I'm sorry, take that back. There were eight ayes, six no's, and one abstention. Sorry, Alderman Borman. Okay, everybody got that clear? Very good. The uh, 668 by public protection and safety recommending that the Common Council keep Wildwood Avenue open and does it go forward with a previous recommendation, RC number 161.0506 that would require blocking Wildwood Avenue and block a driveway into the Sheboygan Athletic Club complex on New Jersey Avenue. Alderman Van Der Thank you, Your Honor. I'll make a motion to accept and adopt the RC. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion, this is a complicated issue and I'll try to explain it in a short amount of time. But about two and a half years ago, Denny Moyer from the, from the local A's baseball complex asked us to work with him regarding the problem of parking around the complex. Our engineering department worked off and on the last two and a half years to come up with the best solution to, uh, to work with any more. We looked at every possibility and decided the best way to go was to close the north side of uh, Wildwood Avenue. 
This would slow traffic down on Wildwood Avenue and would allow more parking in that area. Uh, blocking the driveway along New Jersey Avenue would also allow a little bit more parking. Just for the record, I was always a little concerned about this and how it would affect the public. So recently in public protection and safety, we heard from the residents in that area with the help of Alderman Kittleson, we were able to notify the residents of the meeting time and ask for their input. The public who attended that meeting were all against the closing the street. The community could not take any action because the last council already approved the closing. So tonight I asked the council to listen to the residents of that area on this item and vote not to close the street. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Van Der Wiel. Alderman Meyer, you're next. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I was on this committee last year when this issue came in and we voted to close this road and the reason being we were told that all the neighbors had been notified and no one had a, had a problem with it. So we thought, great, you know, we'll, we'll do something good for the athletic club, possibly a safe, safety for the people walking around in the road and kids chasing balls, we're told. We thought this was an easy situation. And then a couple weeks ago, we find out that all the neighbors are in an uproar. Nobody knows anything about it. So I guess there was some kind of lack of communication and I hope that this kind of stuff doesn't happen in the future. It would make our job a lot easier if the people are notified like we're told. Otherwise, I guess we'll have to run around and start knocking on doors ourselves. But we did trust um, you know, the people, the professionals, and um, I don't know, I guess somebody dropped the ball somewhere. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Meyer. Alderman Kilson. Yes, thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to say on behalf of the residents up in that area of the 3rd District, uh, I appreciate the recommendation of the Public Protection and Safety Committee to, uh, to look at that resolution or that uh, uh, motion to uh, close that street. They really appreciate it. They, I went up there and talked to the people and, and they hadn't heard about it. So I, I don't know where the miscommunication was. But, uh, and I know the people at the VFW Hall were quite upset about it also, so they all appeared at the meeting, and I believe we did hash it all out, but on behalf of all of them, I know they, uh, they appreciate not having the street closed. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Kilson. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. The c citizens in that area did come and speak with us, and they made themselves very clear. Originally, it was to help out the children playing in that area, the parking, the baseball games that were going on, and the city had decided that it is a narrow little street with no curbs, it is very narrow. And it is about half a block further and you're on a regular street to go up that same hill. So we thought it was probably a fine idea to close that and it would make things better. Just wanted to explain a bit more. Thank you. Thank you, Alan Montemayor. Before we call a road, just wanted to point something out. This is another good example of how the Common Council can change its mind. Okay, you're doing it tonight on another issue. When people tell you you're being indecisive, you, you made a decision, don't change your mind, it's okay to change your mind. This is a good example of doing that and there's a good mixture of reasons for that and, and that is what legislation is about. Thank you. Please call roll. Ryan. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Berg. Aye. Serta. Aye. Davis. Aye. Graf. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Cleunas. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. And Radke. Aye. 14 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Ordinances, ordinances introduced 10, 669 through 670 to be referred. Matters laid over. 11. 438 and RO, RO number 350607 by the City Plan Commission recommending vacating that portion of South Water Street between the east right of way line of South 9th Street and the west line of South 8th Street of the original Platte City of Sheboygan. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the report of officer be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion is second to accept and adopt or file and the resolution be put upon its passage under discussion. There be a none. Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Berg? Aye. Serta? Aye. Davis? Aye. Graf? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Cleunas? Aye. Manny? Aye. 
Meyer, aye. Montemayor, aye. Radke, aye. and Ryan. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 671 will go to Public Works, 672 will go to Public Works, 673 will go to Public Works, 674 will go to Committee of the Whole, 675 lies over. Other matters, City Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 676 is a communication from Eric Jensen of LJM Architects requesting an encroachment into the public property along the river boardwalk in the South Pier District to construct a wood deck for outdoor dining purposes to be used in conjunction with the Islander Cafe. That goes to the city plan. 677 is an ordinance granting LJM architects, successors, and assigns the privilege of encroaching upon described portions of a public promenade located at 528 530 South Pier Drive in the city for the purpose of building and maintaining a deck. And that one I'll refer to city planning too. 678 is a resolution adding one additional member and one ex officio member to the short term committee employee remuneration committee. That one will lie over. 679 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from John Madenauer asking that the council vote to bring the location of the police department to a referendum. Hold on a minute, Alderman Kittleson on that one. Thank you, Your Honor. Can we just change that to Gail, the lady, uh, instead of John? It's Gail in the resin, in the. Uh, oh, you could. Oh, okay. Name. Thank the, you. The uh, communication is, has been submitted by Gail. Gail. John, I believe, is her husband. And that will go to the committee of the whole. 680 is a communication from Dimple Adams stating her frustrations regarding the possible sites for the police station and the fact that the 23rd Street location is back on the table. Committee of the whole. 681 is a communication from Debbie Desmolin stating her concerns with the neighbor spraying lawn chemicals that are going airborne into her yard. And that one go for the protection and safety. A motion to adjourn. You got one more session? Oh, I'm sorry. We got closed session. That's right. I'd ask for a motion to, uh, motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in section 19.85 1G for the purpose of conferring with legal counsel for the city who is rendering oral and written advice concerning strategy to be adopted with respect to litigation in which it is or is likely to become involved. So moved. Motion and there a second? Second. second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. We will convene in closed session. I'll ask that everyone else uh, leave.